Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to break down how Manchester United comfortably defeated Derby County 3-0 to advance to the FA Cup quarterfinal. When we break down the game and we do look at the board, we have Derby County in what should be a 4-2-3-1, but without the ball, they often dropped off into two banks of four. We saw United adopt a 4-2-3-1 as well, and when we look at their attacking structure, what we see is Egalo up front, and he's occupied by the two center backs, but in the earlier stages of of that half he was often isolated when we look at the three behind him they often did interchange we had Bruno Fernandes who was supposed to play behind Igalo as that number 10 and we had Lingard and Mata looking to drift in centrally from those wider areas that creates space for Delo and Luke Shaw to push forward and largely based off the fact that we had McTominay and Fred looking to adopt deeper positions. Nevertheless, when you look at Manchester United's attacking three behind Higalo, what we end up seeing here is Bruno Fernandes often likes to drop off ahead of the opposing midfield bank to get on the ball. It could be from the center, it could be from the left, it could be from the right, but that's where he does operate rather than solely looking to receive the ball between the lines. We saw different variations from Juan Mata. He often was looking to drift centrally and that does create space for Delo to push forward. But there were times where we did see him shift out to that wide touchline position and that would see Delo make underlapping runs into that right channel. On the left hand side, Lingard was predominantly looking to cut central and there were times where we did see Fernandes drift out into that space to get on the ball. But that's how United's attacking three looked to operate behind the Manchester United striker. When we look to the deeper positions, the midfield battle should be set in stone. We should be having Rooney and Bird stepping into the path of Fred and McTominay. But initially, what we ended up seeing was Waghorn and Sibley looking to step out to Lindelof and Bailly. And that created space for Fred or McTominay to drop off a bit deeper. Nevertheless, as that game did continue, what ended up happening here is that they didn't necessarily box in the Manchester United double pivot. But they looked to have Sibley and Waghorn sit on the them and allow Lindelof and Bailly to push forward. The manner in which United looked to overcome that was by having Fred drop off centrally and with Sibley and Waghorn dropping off deeper as well, it did often see them get in between Fred to ensure that he couldn't pick up the ball in those 3v2 situations. So essentially that would help Darby because if you have the two strikers in between United's deepest midfielder, you could have Rooney step out into the path of McTominay and then you could have Bird deal with any movement around the final third. Nevertheless, Fred and McTominay were able to overcome that threat by shifting out into the channels to get on the ball, and that creates space for the fullbacks to push forward. Initially, we did see Waghorn look to press Lindelof and block off the passing lane into Fred, but McTominay was free to drop off into that right channel and pick up the ball. Bird and Rooney weren't looking to step out to press Fred or McTominay in their half because Darby were so focused on remaining compact and keeping those banks organized but essentially that allowed United's midfielders to get on the ball and it allowed the fullbacks to push forward which essentially pegged back Darby's back line. So as you can see here through United's attacking structure, you have the fullbacks pushing forward, you have the attacking three players looking to interchange positions, and you have Bruno Fernandes dropping off a bit deeper, looking to find avenues where he could play penetrative passes to bypass the Derby County midfield and the back line. So when we look to one of the first avenues where United were able to create chances, we have to look to Bruno Fernandes. We ended up seeing him shift out to that left channel ahead of Bogle to receive a pass from Fred. And from there, he locates the underlapping run of Luke Shaw, and he plays a reverse pass that bypasses Bogle and Knight for Luke Shaw in half space, but his pullback was cleared by Evans. And shortly after that, we saw Fernand shift out into that zone once again, this time splitting Waghorn and Knight and finding Juan Mata at the edge of the box ahead of Bogle and Rooney, but Mata can only fire a tame effort on goal. When we look to another avenue in which United were able to get him beyond that Derby County backline, it stemmed through space behind low. And what we ended up seeing here initially was Forsyth trying to clear the ball into Sibley, but Fred did step in. And when Fred holds off, Sibley ends up poking the ball to Juan Mata. And when Mata holds off Sibley, what he's able to do is he plays the ball around low into that right channel as he locates Bruno Fernandes running off Wayne Rooney to receive the ball in that channel. However, when Bruno Fernandes picks up that 
that ball in that right channel, his cross is over hit and it ends up falling to McTominay, who can't get a shot off in left half space. When we look to another example, this time we see McTominay drop off into that right channel position to receive the ball from Bailly, and McTominay ends up sliding it across Lawrence into the path of Mata on that touchline. Mata receives the ball on that right touchline, and he also wraps the ball around low once again, and it ends up finding Delo, who ended up running off Lawrence to make an underlapping run in between Forsyth and Lowe. When Delo receives that ball in that right channel, what ends up happening there is that Forsyth ends up coming across to try and close him down. We have Igalo running into the box ahead of Evans, and it allows Delo to pull the ball back into the path of Bruno Fernandes, who's running off Bird, but his shot towards that edge of the box is blocked. What you can see from those two examples is that you have players running in behind low. You have midfield runners in Bruno Fernandes running across Rooney and running across Bird. And you also see Juan Mata shifting out into these wider positions to serve as a creative fulcrum. But when you break down the buildup to United's opening goal, we see similar themes from these breakdowns. What we see is Lindelof breaking forward towards half and he's not being pressed and he ends up sliding the ball across Knight into the path of Luke Shaw who looks to break forward on the overlap. Luke Shaw looks to push forward and what he ends up doing there is he squares the ball across Bogle and Knight for Lingard running off Bird. Once again we have Luke Shaw pushing forward, we have Lingard running off a midfield runner and Lingard does have two shots blocked. Bruno Fernandes picks up the loose ball and he ends up firing an effort off Forsyth but that ends up falling to Luke Shaw in left half space and he's able to beat the keeper to put United ahead. And when we look to the build up to United's second goal, we have McTominay dropping off deeper to pick up the ball from Bayi once again. This time he locates Bruno Fernandes shifting out to that left channel to receive the long diagonal ball. Fernandes does receive that long diagonal ball and when Knight looks to come across, Bruno Fernandes clips the ball over him for Luke Shaw running towards goal on the underlap. You have Luke Shaw running at Bogle and before Knight could come across to apply some pressure, we end up seeing Shaw split Rooney and Bird to fight Igalo ahead of Lowe and Forsyth and Igalo is able to bully both of those defenders away and fire low effort past the keeper. But as you can see in that build up once again, McTominay dropping off into that right channel, no pressure. Bruno Fernandes shifting out into that left channel and when he does shift out into that left channel, you have the overlapping run of Shaw, you have Bird and Rooney being bisected and now you have Igalo finally receiving service and he makes no mistake. So when we look to the second half, we did see a brief fight back from Derby County and there were able to exploit United's defense by playing diagonal balls out into that left channel. Initially we had Rooney clip a diagonal ball over Lingard for Bogle pushing forward and with Lingard looking to retreat we had Bogle deliver across around Lingard, Shaw and the center backs for Waghorn making a darting run between the center backs but Waghorn nodded his effort from point blank range inches wide of the net and he has to finish there. And the other example that does highlight Derby County breaking down that right hand side sees Lingard stepping in towards Evans to press as Bruno Fernandes shifted out to the left hand side and Evans is able to play the ball into Whitaker dropping off deeper to pull out Luke Shaw towards the halfway line. Whitaker receives the ball and turns across Luke Shaw and once Whitaker turns across Luke Shaw we see Bogle beginning to run beyond Bruno Fernandes. What ends up happening there is that Whitaker is still tracked by Shaw and once McTominay steps forward we end up seeing Whitaker split McTominay and Shaw to play the ball into Bogle breaking freely down that right channel. However when Bogle gets into that position he plays a heavy cross to the opposite side of the pitch and the play ends up dying out there. However, United were able to gain control following those two nervy moments, and once again, it stemmed through Bruno Fernandes. He ended up splitting Sibley and Waghorn along with Bird and Rooney to find Igalo dropping off, and Igalo dropped the ball off back to Bruno Fernandes, who tried to clip the ball into Delo running off Knight, but his pass was over hit, and we saw something similar after that, where he picked up the ball ahead of the midfield bank and tried to locate Mata, making a run in between the center backs, but that pass was also over hit. Nevertheless, we did get to see another combination play into two avenues in which United were able to exploit Derby County's defense through Bruno Fernandes 
and Luke Shaw's overlapping runs. And shortly after that, Egalo was able to double his goal tally and finish off the game. When you break down that game as a whole, United were able to exploit various avenues behind that Derby County backline to get into good goal scoring positions. They had McTominay drop off a bit deeper to ignite moves from that right channel zone. We saw Bruno Fernandes and Lingard run off the Derby County midfielders. We had Luke Shaw making overlapping runs into advanced positions. And whenever they got the ball to Egalo in and around the box, he proved to be a legitimate goal scoring threat. And that is why United deserved to advance to the FA Cup quarterfinal. And frankly, could prove to be a threat if they get Paul Pogba back in a midfield with Bruno Fernandes, who once again dictated the tempo of the game and created the best chances when he dropped off ahead of the opposing side's midfield bank. But let me know what you guys think. Are Manchester United in a good position to win the FA Cup? And with Paul Pogba back, do you think that this midfield can help them finish in the top four? Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget I upload videos every day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And once again, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And that was your daily dose of the interviews. Hi everybody, thanks for watching and subscribe here for your latest tactical analysis and daily commentary on the interview show. And if that wasn't enough, don't forget you could find more organic, unfiltered soccer slash football analysis on the Interviews Podcast, the best soccer slash football podcast in the world, available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and any Android apps on your Android devices.